gallon of ethanol only has about two thirds of the amount of energy as is stored in a gallon of gasoline. And yet you can make more power using ethanol. Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're talking about why ethanol is capable of making such big power numbers. So the first thing we need to understand is that these two fuels have very different air fuel ratios. So if we look at pure gasoline, in other words E0, meaning 0% ethanol content, it has an air fuel ratio by mass of 14.7 parts air to one part fuel. If we look at pure ethanol, E100, it has an air fuel ratio of nine to one, so it's significantly lower, meaning you're going to be using more ethanol for the same amount of air as you would with gasoline. So the energy density by volume of gasoline, 33.7 kilowatt hours per gallon, versus only 22.6 kilowatt hours per gallon of ethanol. So it's at about 67% of the energy content. Now if we look at energy density by mass, in other words, the lower heating value, well it's 12 12.21 kilowatt hours of energy per kilogram of gasoline versus just 7.45 kilowatt hours per kilogram of ethanol. Now here's the interesting thing. So if we have an engine and within that cylinder we have 14.7 kilograms of air, which yes is a lot, uh, it's just gonna make our math simple, that's why we're using that number. Well that means that we only need one kilogram of fuel because that's our air fuel ratio, 14.7 to one. Now ethanol, on the other hand, has a lower fuel ratio. So we'll have to take that 14.7, divide it by nine, and that means we're going to need 1.63 kilograms of ethanol to put into that cylinder to have the ideal mixture with that fuel. So now if we multiply our energy density by how much fuel is going in it, that'll tell us the total amount of energy that will then be in that cylinder with the air and the fuel. So we multiply 12.21 times one, pretty easy, 12.21 kilowatt hours within that cylinder. And then for ethanol, we multiply 7.45 by 1.63, and that gives us 12.17. So as you can see, these are nearly identical. So while it has less energy in it, you inject more fuel within that cylinder for the same amount of air, and thus they make very equal power, assuming their thermal efficiencies are the same. So if you need to use more fuel to make the same amount of power, does this mean your fuel economy is trash? Yes. Now, if you were to assume an engine could run on either fuel with equal thermal efficiency and it was getting 30 miles per gallon using pure gasoline, well, it would get about 20 miles per gallon using ethanol. In other words, gasoline giving a 50% improvement in fuel economy. Now, Consumer Reports actually ran a test with a Chevy Tahoe and on E10, so regular pump gas, they were getting 14 miles per gallon versus using E85, they got just 10 miles per gallon. So in other words, a 40% real world uh, improvement in MPG using gasoline. However, ethanol has a greater thermal efficiency and ethanol can make much more power. So versus gasoline, ethanol has two big advantages and both of these relate to the fuel's octane number. Now the first part of this is a chemical property of ethanol, so it's inherent to the fuel itself. So if you take an engine that has a variable compression ratio and then you put a fuel within that engine and you compress it a certain amount and you start to see, hey, do we have any knock? And you don't. So you further increase that compression ratio and you say, hey, do we run into engine knock? No, and you don't. So you keep going and you keep going and you keep going until you finally start to have knock and that gives you a way to compare the octane number of different fuels. How much compression ratio can it handle before you start to run into knock? So that is how research octane number is calculated uh, and it's on a scale that gives you premium gasoline having an octane rating of about 97. You could be much lower than this uh, for lower quality gasolines and then of course ethanol here at 109 for its octane rating. So as you can see significantly higher meaning you can use higher compression ratios it is more resistant to knock. Now, as you start to add ethanol into gasoline, you increase the properties of gasoline uh, to resist knock. So that's what this plot here is looking at uh, from a study which I found, super interesting study, and what it shows is that as you start to add that ethanol, the initial increase in the octane number of the fuel is very dramatic. But then by about 30 to 40%, uh, you no longer get any benefit from it. So after about 40%, there's no real benefit from a chemical standpoint of adding ethanol into gasoline to increase that octane number. Number. Now, whether you're using port injection or direct injection, this advantage exists because it's purely a property of the fuel itself. 
However, there is a cooling benefit that is much more prominent using direct injection. All right, this is awesome. So we need to understand something called heat of vaporization. So as we inject fuel into the cylinder, that fuel is going to change from a liquid to a gas. And it requires energy to do this in order to transform from a liquid to a gas. So that fuel is pulling energy from the surrounding environment to create that phase change. And in doing so, it's cooling down that surrounding environment. This is great because it means lower cylinder temperatures, which means less likelihood for knock. Now, if you're using direct injection, that is all occurring directly within the cylinder. So it's a much greater benefit than if you're doing that, say, in the intake and you're pulling from, you know, the intake environment to cool down rather than having it all occur within the cylinder. So it's important where it occurs. Now, ethanol has an advantage in its heat of vaporization versus gasoline. So if we look at that number for gasoline, it's 305 kilojoules per kilogram of fuel versus ethanol, it's 885 kilojoules per kilogram of fuel, which you can see is much greater. Now, keep in mind, we're injecting even more fuel versus gasoline for the same amount of air. So if we look at the heat of vaporization per kilogram of air fuel mixture, that number is even greater for ethanol. So if you take 305 and you divide it by 14.7 plus one, that gives you 19.4. And if you take 885 and divide it by nine plus one, well, that gives you 88.5. And if you take this number and divide it by this number, that means you have a 4.56 times advantage as far as heat of vaporization. Now, what does this translate to as far as a temperature drop? Well, the maximum theoretical temperature drop uh, for gasoline, this 97 gasoline we're using here being 20 degrees versus ethanol E100 80 degree temperature drop because of that heat of vaporization. Now this means you have a much cooler cylinder which means you've significantly reduced your chances for knock. Now this correlates with our octane number. So we saw that there was a chemical benefit of adding a certain percentage of ethanol into our gasoline and that raises our octane number. So that's the same plot we have drawn right here. Now we also have that cooling benefit which is in addition. So that further raises to our total octane number which you can see drawn here. So here is just from the chemical benefit. And then as you can see, the more ethanol you have, because all of it will always provide a heat of vaporization benefit, the wider that gap occurs and you always get a benefit from having more ethanol within the fuel from a cooling standpoint. Now it's worth mentioning that this advantage is much greater for direct injection because that's occurring within the cylinder than port injection. So the chemical advantage is true for both. The total advantage, the cooling advantage here is much more so for direct injection. So because ethanol can provide a much higher octane number, well, it means you have more flexibility with your ignition timing, it means you can run more boost, and it means you can run higher compression ratios. All of this meaning you can make more power. So I found a really cool study performed by Ford where they took a 3.5 liter direct injection turbocharged engine out of an F-150 and they put various fuels in it. So two of those fuels being E10 as well as E85. And then they essentially cranked up the boost with each of these different fuels until they ran into knock, until they ran into engine problems. So what we're looking at here on the bottom, we have engine RPM. On the left, we have brake mean effective pressure. If you're unfamiliar with brake mean effective pressure, you can think of it as torque per liter uh, and I'll do some helpful translating a little later on to help explain this but here we can see the curves of these two fuels right and as you can see E85 has a much greater torque per liter brake mean effective pressure than E10 so if we look at this point right here, we have 5,000 RPM and at 5,000 RPM, the maximum brake mean effective pressure we can achieve is 19.5 bar versus on E10 at 5,000 RPM, it's just 9.9 bar, meaning nearly half. So if you do the math, this is making about 380 horsepower running E85, whereas here we're only making about 190 horsepower. Double the power simply by using a different fuel. Now, one of the key things that's worth pointing out is this is looking at the maximum brake mean effective pressure at an ideal air fuel ratio, meaning you're running these at stoichiometric in both of these cases. So you could make more power with E10. This could have a higher pressure, but it would have to use fuel enrichment, meaning add in more fuel to help have some of that cooling property. And because of that, you could make more power, but it means your efficiency is going to tank. So with this test, Ford was looking at how 
much power can they make without having to rely on fuel enrichment? So for this test, the E85 had a research octane number of 108, and the engine was running at a higher compression ratio, 13 to 1, because it can get away with it thanks to that higher octane number, versus the E10, which is at a 91 research octane number, and the engine was only able to run at a 10 to 1 compression ratio. So we're running at a higher compression ratio, and we're running with more boost, and the result of this is we make significantly more power. And critically, we're making that power without harming the engine. Now it doesn't have to all be about power. So because ethanol allows you to use a higher compression ratio, it means you can also achieve greater thermal efficiencies. So in this testing, they found using E85 versus E10, they could see anywhere from 10 to 34% efficiency improvements by using that different fuel. Now, this is actually really interesting because if you look at this curve here, you can see the initial benefit from adding ethanol to gasoline is very high, right? It really dramatically increases that octane number and then the benefit kind of goes away. Same deal over here, right? You still get a benefit here, but the initial impact is very strong. So what was fascinating in this test, when they went from E10 to E20, meaning taking today's gasoline that you buy at the pump and adding in 10% ethanol to it, that raised the octane number that allowed for using an 11.9 to one compression ratio versus 10 to one compression ratio and still have similar not characteristics. And the efficiency improvement here outweighed the density, the energy density lost because ethanol has less energy within that amount of fuel. So they actually saw a 1% mile per gallon improvement by adding ethanol even though it has less energy. Efficiency beats energy density. That is absolutely awesome to see. Now, if you've ever messed around with pure gasoline in your car, you might now be wondering, well, wait a minute, why do I get worse fuel economy with E10, meaning 10% ethanol if it has this efficiency advantage over pure gasoline, E0. Well, because that's not how it works here in the US. So in the US, if you were to buy pure E0, pure gasoline with a 91 research octane number, or you were to buy E10 with a 91 research octane number, well, what that 91 research octane number E10 has is a lower blend stock, so an 87 research octane number, for example, plus ethanol, then bringing it up to a 91. So there's less energy within that gallon of fuel, but it will perform exactly the same as gasoline with that same octane number. In other words, you're going to get worse fuel economy because there's less energy, same performance. So there you have it. Ethanol as a fuel can lead to crazy horsepower numbers. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Thanks for watching.